On the 11th of April, Russian airstrikes destroyed the largest power generating plant in Kiev region of Ukraine. A total of 82 missiles and drones were fired, of which Ukraine claims to have managed to shoot down about 18 missiles and 39 drones. Russia had also fired six Kinzel hypersonic missiles. But Ukraine simply hasn't got the air defense systems to intercept hypersonic missiles that Russia has been firing at it. As a result, the Tripilska thermal power plant, the largest supplier of electricity to Kiev, Cherkasy and Zaitomer regions, was completely destroyed. Centenergo, the company that generates nearly about 20% of all Ukrainian energy needs, has said that in the past three weeks, it has witnessed the most intense and the most targeted airstrikes on Ukraine's power infrastructure. The Kremlin has said that these airstrikes on Ukraine's power infrastructure are meant to avenge the Ukrainian campaign of specifically targeting Russian oil refineries. So as this war of attrition continues unabated into its third year, why are power facilities and oil refineries the new targets for both the Russian and the Ukrainian missiles? Our next port gives you more details. Thick plumes of black smoke rose over Kiev. As the sirens blared and people rushed into the underground metro stations to take cover, what became clear was the Russian strategy where it was specifically targeting Ukraine's power infrastructure. The Tripilska thermal power plant was completely destroyed by a barrage of missiles that struck one after another. And Kiev, that is now fighting the Russian onslaught on its own, had no air defense systems to protect its key infrastructure. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who was at a summit in Vilnius at the time, did not mince words. While the United States is mired in its domestic politics on the question of sending military aid to fight against Russia, Volodymyr Zelensky insisted that the time to act is now. We don't have our own air defense comparable to Patriot. It just doesn't exist. I want to tell you that we need time. We need help from our partners. We won't need Patriot systems forever. We will definitely be able to produce our own systems. We started working on this. I believe we will be able to do it. But during this time, we don't want to lose people. After much hemming and hawing, the United States on the 10th of April announced that it will send about $138 million worth of Hawk air defense systems to equip Ukraine to defend itself against the Russian drone and cruise missile attacks. The United States has been shipping Hawk interceptor missiles to Ukraine since 2022 as an upgrade to the shoulder launch Stinger air defense missile systems. But Ukraine has said that this is just not enough and it needs the Patriot air missile defense systems to guard itself from the Russian hypersonic missiles. A sentiment echoed by the NATO chief, Jens Stoltenberg. Delays in delivery of air defenses will allow Russian missiles to hit more uh, targets and delays in delivery of ammunition will allow Russia to press along the front line. Ukraine uh, simply cannot wait. Uh, it needs air defenses, ammunition and aid now. The Russia-Ukraine war has undergone a qualitative change. It is no longer a contest of artillery firepower. Instead, some NATO nations who are now willing to send the slightly longer-range missiles has meant that Kiev has been striking targets deep inside Russia. For instance, on the 9th of April, Ukraine struck a Russian aviation factory in the Voronezh region deep inside the Russian territory. Kiev claims that it used the domestically produced long-range drones to carry out this attack. Kiev is also using its long-range drones and missiles to accomplish what the Western sanctions have failed so far. There is a campaign by Ukraine to strike at Russia's economic and logistical sinews. In the last few weeks and months, there has been a concerted campaign by Kiev to repeatedly strike at Russia's oil refineries. Consider this, Russia earns 40% of its revenue from the export of its crude oil and petroleum products. And in the Ukrainian strike so far, Kiev has destroyed almost 900,000 barrels a day of refining capacity of Russia. Russia has an installed refining capacity of almost 5 million barrels per day. 
but the destroyed refining capacity is beginning to tell in the Russian finances. Western sanctions on shipping and insurance were easily circumvented by Russia by using its fleet of shadow oil tankers to the extent that Russia's oil exports had remained unchanged. But this new strategy of Ukraine to target Russian refineries has raised some very serious concerns for the military strategists at the Kremlin. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.